Sure, that financial expert Rob Black, and a lot of people talking about this Uber Lyft story yes. uh, threatening to pull out of Austin, Texas. And it should have some ramifications into yeah. other cities, especially in the south part of the United States. This is a big deal, not not really to you and me because we endorse Lyft here and we endorse Uber. But think about how many more drunk drivers there will be. I was at a party this weekend where everyone got drunk and everyone took home an Uber or Lyft because we don't trust cabs. Cabs take too long to get to us. Um, on top of that, you know, uh, it's a job creator. 10,000 plus people have done drives uh, with Uber in Austin. Austin's a tech friendly city with South by Southwest and their whole appeal. So this is bad. They lost a, a city council kind of th scenario where they want drivers to be fingerprinted. Uber and Lyft say, we already do background checks. But they don't fingerprint. But they don't fingerprint. I'm not sure how important fingerprints are in the digital age right. of background checks. Um, with that said, you know, I, I find it, it it's also bad for the nightlife. All my friends in San Francisco who go out on a Saturday night, they all Uber and Lyft. Right. They don't have to pay for parking. They get to the club, they come home. So right. the ramifications are pretty social. Well, I think of what the, the, the people of Austin voted here, and they voted that they wanted fingerprinting. And so it seems to me it's, a, it's an extra safeguard that you know your driver is a safe person to be driving you around. Right, so I mean, there's two sides to the story here. It seems like Uber and Lyft, they they're very political in yeah. the way they get themselves in the cities, but don't want to play by the rules a lot of times. And That's the flip side of the and coin. It can't be that hard because our phones have fingerprint sensors on. Right. It can't be that hard to get a digital fingerprint. Yeah. With that said, I don't know the ramifications of the legal side, other than that this will be now used by other cities against Uber and Lyft. Yeah. It's a big win for the taxi cab industry, which. I, I don't like, and yeah. I don't think most people like because of bad experiences in the right. past. I'll just say it should be a more level playing field, in my opinion, as far as taxis are treated one way and Uber and Lyft are treated another way. And I'll argue with you. Okay. If Mark Dannon wants to let Daria Folsom in his car or you know anyone in the middle of sa Saturday night, he should be allowed to do it. It's up to Mark and it's up to the customer. But you know we can argue. The free market approach. The free yeah. market approach. Okay. All right, let's talk about the Southwest effect. Yeah. And Southwest Airlines, uh, every time they seem to open up in a new city, it's good for everybody. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with that said, it, it's, it's called the Southwest Effect. And there's actually another company. You know, Southwest recently got into international flights. So they're going into Mexico, they're going to the Caribbean, they're going into Central America. And when they do, prices to all of those destinations drop 25%. Spirit Airways went into Mexico and Central America and other cities that Southwest didn't serve. And because they're a discounter, prices drop 25%. The consumer wins when there's more low cost air carriers. So to see Virgin. Uh, uh, America merged with um, Alaska Air, you know, you're taking out two of the, the, the smaller players and the non-legacy players, and that's where the sadness comes in, because competition truly breeds lower prices in airfares. And, um, you know, go, go southwest, keep uh, flying more destinations. If you can get into Hawaii, I'd like that. <laughs> yes, yeah. you know, get those prices down. Yeah, it would be nice. All right. up. A lot of Krispy Kreme fans around here, yeah. myself included. And uh, so we see this with companies like Burger King, now Krispy Kreme, public companies being taken private. Yeah. 1.3 and a half, 1.35 billion for Krispy Kreme. 25% premium from Friday's wow. close. Not too shabby. Um, who doesn't like a little bit of dough thrown in a jacuzzi of grease? Mm, <laughs> yummy. So they're going to be acquired by JEB Beach. Some companies aren't meant to be publicly traded. Uh, a lot of franchises that have some franchisees and some corporate stores, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So going private is a great thing. They can close stores more effect efficiently. They can get management changes more done quicker, um, not have to worry about talking to the public about it when they're publicly traded. Um, they say growth in the future is going to come from opening stores overseas. Got it. Increasing brand awareness. Yes. And then updating the menu. Like. Donuts feel like they're like a 200-year-old thing, and you're updating them, but they're a play on coffee in the morning as well. JAB also owns Keurig Green Mountain Coffee. They also own Pete's Coffee, ah. and they also own Caribou Coffee. Coffee and donuts. So they're, they're Starbucks' biggest competitor, and no one's ever heard of JAB. Interesting. You could have bought the stock for under $2 a share seven years ago, and today it's $20 a share. Pretty good story there. Donuts. Yeah, donuts. All right, Wanda asking, Rob, how do I protect my investments in retirement? First and foremost, congratulations on being retired. Um, that's not something everyone is able to do and to say that they have investments. Um, it's wonderful to have the upside, yay, but when there's downside, people can't stomach it, especially in retirement. Um, so what you do is you go three years of spending. So if you're going to spend $60,000, you pull, um, if you're going to spend $60,000 a year, you pull 180 out. Let's go with a more realistic number. Let's go with, you know, $20,000 a year. So you pull 60000 put it in cash or a cash equivalent. 
and then you invest the rest in a normalized, healthy, low cost, uh, low volatility, value approach, and you try to replenish those three years of cash, uh, maybe one year at a time, maybe over you know, a year and a half, but you always keep that cash there because you don't want the volatility of the market, so that's how you protect against downside. Interesting. All right. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Wanda, for the question. If you have a question for Rob, post on his Facebook page, and we'll answer. Start here at 5 with Pam Moore. She's first to show you what's happening now. A team of reporters breaking news as it happens.